let's say you were tasked to find and identify a very specific pattern of mistake in your entire organization's infrastructure. Maybe this is like looking for a specific file, maybe a .env file continuously gets leaked on your infrastructure, or maybe you're just looking to eliminate every bit of documentation on your APIs, or even better, maybe you're a bug bounty hunter looking to maybe fingerprint a specific product, or you're just hunting for a specific CVE, for example, with the recent Nexus repository manager, maybe you're looking for that exact CVE, and you want to identify as many of them as you can within a large scope of programs, or maybe it's even every bug bounty program that you have access to. Well, the challenge here becomes, how do we successfully fingerprint for these things, and how do we identify them and identify them fast? My favorite thing to usually use as an example for fingerprinting is looking at something like Swagger UI. So let's jump into it and then kind of look at what makes Swagger UI very unique and what are the different things that we need to consider when we're looking for something to fingerprint. So for example, if you look at this Swagger instance we have in front of us, we don't want to really just focus on the content. For example, we don't care about the exact endpoints that are on here, but we want to look at one of the different common things that are going to be shown in this case in Swagger, for example, that could be the same across the board. So for this example, to even make it easier, we want to kind of look at what does this look like in a terminal. So we're going to send the curl request to this domain. I'm just going to take this out and send our request. And this is kind of what our browser is going to see when we make a request. And there are a couple of things here that are very, very specific to Swagger itself. One is the title. So if we're looking at the body of this thing, the first thing that we want to look at is where is Swagger UI is going to show up. So for this one example, there's a title. So we can maybe use the title of this page as a specific fingerprint. So that is something that you can look for. It could be a specific keyword. Sometimes I look for something like base path, especially if it's the Swagger JSON, for example, right here. Let's say you don't have a Swagger.UI and you're looking at just the Swagger.json file, then you can look for Swagger and the keyword base path. And if both of those show up, then you know that you have a Swagger.json file in front of you. So that's just based on the response that the server is getting back to us when we send this request. But there are a couple more things that we can look at. Maybe it doesn't work with Swagger, but it is really, really good to look at the headers or the response headers that come back because sometimes there is going to be a response header that is very, very unique for the thing that we're hacking on. So that's something that unfortunately for this example of Swagger, that is not the case. But if you're looking at a specific product, maybe you're looking at some Java apps, for example, or maybe you're looking at Jenkins or Jira or Atlassian products, that's the case sometimes in their response headers are very, very unique to that thing. The third thing that I want to take a look at is the paths and files that are accessible through this thing that we are fingerprinting. And in this case with Swagger, it is the swagger.css file. So anytime that Swagger file exists, there should also be a swagger.css. So we can actually fingerprint that and use this path as a part of our fingerprint. A lot of times, a lot of these companies have maybe a logo that's very specific to their name, or maybe they have a fab icon, for example, that you can take a look at that is very, very unique to that product. We'll explore one of those later, maybe in a Grafana or Nexus example, but you kind of want to look at what are the different paths. So if this example works, what path can I hit? What file can I find to just use as a secondary fingerprint just to make sure this is valid and not really a false positive. This comes in very handy in one of our examples when we look at nuclei or nuclei, nuclei, but this is kind of what you want to do. You want to kind of look at this thing and see what makes it super unique to this thing that we are looking for a fingerprint. Now, let's take a look at an example for a specific product. I know previously I mentioned Nexus because of the recent CVE. So let's take a look at Nexus and how do we just identify Nexus as a product based on the different parts of it that makes it unique to this piece of product itself. Obviously, Nexus is one that's probably easier to identify because everyone has access to it and there's probably a fingerprint out there for it. Maybe there's a template for it, but this is also sometimes very applicable to a piece of custom software or maybe an application that your company has written. So for example, maybe it's a framework you use to redeploy all your apps, whatever that case may be, you can kind of identify them based on the different pads and the different files that come with it. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at the source or the DOM of this page and see what makes this unique. Again, like our previous example and the Swagger case, the title is a really, really good place to go to. And you can just fingerprint that based on just the title itself. And you can also look at the version numbers based on the CSS and the JS files that are within it. So if these files exist and you can hit them in a specific piece of code comes up, maybe that one, not a, maybe that one is not a good example. Let me look at this one instead. 
Uh, let me see one more. Maybe base app, for example, if you hit this base app.css and within it, it has a base app that says the version is 3.60, then you know it's a vulnerable version of Nexus and so on. This is kind of what you do in your information gathering phase. I know a lot of hackers just skip this because they're just looking for vulnerabilities and I'll show you how you can fingerprint for a vulnerability as well. But a lot of times people miss this, but it is really, really important for you to have a list of assets that are flagged as a specific product, whether the back can use as for example tomcat whether it's jira whether it's for example nexus in this case you want to have a list of them in case a cve gets dropped eventually and you're not scramming and just looking for these assets and you just have a list already but now that we got that out of the way we can kind of take a look at how do we actually fingerprint for a vulnerability well that's kind of easy because we already have the POC for this vulnerability. This is very, very similar to what Orange Sci has been doing in years of research of different path traversals. I'm not going to dig into the CV itself. This is not what the video is about. If you want to see a video about the analysis of this CV, drop me a comment with just Nexus and maybe I'll do it in the future. But the process here is just you send this exact request. You don't have to attach any headers and it's going to come back and send you the contents of the ETC password file. And all you have to do is just fingerprint for the root column X to be present in the response. And if you get that back, that also is a part of fingerprinting just for the vulnerability itself. But why am I making this video if people are actually making nuclei templates already for these things? Well, those nuclei templates or nuclei templates are not always the perfect fit. It's just the most bare minimum requirement for that CVE or for that product. A lot of times these paths change. Maybe someone is using a custom path. Maybe they're missing a path. Maybe you're going into a different folder before you actually find that piece of software or the piece of information that you're looking for. So you want to keep an account for all of those before you jump into scanning. But now that we got that out of the way, it is time for us to do our demo and take a look at example of doing this. And for this video, I'm kind of going to use Meg for this as a first part. I think this is the easiest way to do this. But Meg does have its pros and cons. One of the things that I don't like about Meg itself that is it's kind of slow, but it is the most accurate result you're going to get because what Meg does in this tool is by Tom Nom Nom. Go on GitHub, check it out. I'll put it in the description as well. But what this tool does is regardless of what endpoint you give it it doesn't care if the response is valid or if it's invalid it's going to make that request and save the content of this into your server so let me quickly show you what this means for this example already i've kind of done my scan i'm doing aol scans right now and i'm just giving it 150 concurrency and the list right here is the list of the different paths that i'm looking for and if you look at it the list isn't just swagger.json it is not just swagger ui.html it's a bunch of different api docs which I've done a whole video on this. It's an AI generated word list video that I did in the past. But the point here is that we are not just looking for one path. We're giving it a ton of different paths. And let's see how many that is actually really quickly. There is 84 paths that we're sending. And the reason why this makes Meg very slow is because for every host that we have in there, there's going to be 84 requests sent. And there's going to be 84 responses saved in our out folder. So if I do an LS out, you can see these are all the different things that I've looked for is all the different hosts that we have hit. And if we do a cat out index, let's see, you can see all of these different results and it's just going to save them no matter what. But what you have to do here is now you have to dig into every single response and you have to do some gripping around it. I've made a alias actually that I can show you. Let me just show you what this alias looks like. I call it search. What search does is it just goes through my out file and it cuts a bunch of different things and it looks for it to be a 200 and it matches that specific fingerprint. So if I do a search, for example, here and I do base path, if there's a swagger.json file that we have found, it's going to match up to it and say, hey, this is the file that came as 200. It is valid and it had the keyword base path, which I don't think it's going to have that, but let's give it a try. Obviously, this doesn't exist. But if I do a swagger, UI and we send the same exact request if a swagger UI was found then it's going to print that exact file where it matched that and you have to open it and kind of see where that URL was and then visit it so you can see right here it came back and says Celine dot one ad server that AOL has that so I'm going to put that in the browser it's going to come back and 
as we expected this is a swagger file but again mig is a really good step if you're just doing things with a small number of hosts but a large path file and you just don't care about the output you want to collect all this data maybe you need it down the road it's a good tool to have but it's not the best solution for this thing the next thing we want to take a look at is nuclei nuclei is also is it nuclei drop me a comment let me know is it nuclei or nuclei but nuclei by project discovery is also another tool that you can use by using this tool you can actually create a template that is going to do exactly what you want it and let me show you what that looks like so let's take a look at this example of the swagger ui you can see that they have some decent paths these are not all of them again it's missing a bunch of them for example you don't see any api v1 for any of these ones uh, you don't see swagger.json for a lot of them, but this is a decent template. And what it's doing is it takes the exact request that you need to send in order for you to be able to identify whatever it is that you are fingerprinting for. So in this case, it's sending a get request. Sometimes we need to send a post request. Who knows? It could be a put request, whatever that case be. Then you're going to give it the path you want to look for. So in this case, my list.txt could go in here and we're going to put base URL right before it. And it's going to just make a list of them. But what's really important here is this right here one if you want to follow redirects you set that to true and you look for matchers matchers are what you want the specific fingerprint to match for so for example in this case they're saying the type of matching here is the type word which means the specific word has to exist that word could be a for example a path in the dom so right here if i look at this nexus thing if i want to make a word match i could just say hey if this piece of code right here if this css file exists then that means that we have found a nexus and i can just put that in here for our words right here that says hey if you found this base path then if you find a css path then it means that it matches and it's valid but there's a condition that says and that means that both of these have to be true so for in this case it says condition is and if this word matches and this status comes back as 200 then it means that this is a valid finding or is a valid fingerprint for the thing that we're looking for so i know this is complex but i really need you to understand how to fingerprint for things because i know the project discovery team has a open source repository of all the things that they have fingerprinted but i think that's not everything and you need to really get good at making these fingerprints on your own because there are so many of them that are not created for and no one's publishing them that i think you need to do for yourself but now let's talk about looking at a scan for this and if you want to do this i'm going to just quickly take nuclei i'm going to just quickly take this file and drop it in here so what we're going to do quickly is we're going to just run this tool and say hey i want you to use this list aol.com and i want you to run swagger.yaml which is the same content as what we have on this screen i just took that in put it in here but this again is pretty slow and it's going to take forever for it to scan and may sometimes find some really cool stuff you can see just found this if i go to it it's going to be another nuclear template but this is really really slow it's not really bad at all it's just very very slow especially if you're doing a ton of different assets so let me show you what my favorite thing to do is and uh, kind of how i use it for my benefit and then you can decide what is the best approach out of the three that i've shown you so far all right so this is actually the trickiest webflow that i've created for this a lot of my scans that i do especially when i'm large scanning for massive scopes or just maybe scanning every bug bounty program that's out there for just data or maybe just want to do some mass scanning across large organizations this is kind of the workflow that i use it's actually available for public i'll link it down below you can also use it but what it does is it takes a list of the different targets that you're doing and if you look right here i'm still running this uh, last test and it's been going on for the last 15 minutes it takes a file for all different targets you just click right here and upload it and then it takes a template and what's really cool about this is that it allows you to distribute this within a ton of different machines the cool thing here is that they split all of your different targets right here so it splits the entire file right here makes an output out of it and then it just distributes that to nuclei so it gets this whole thing done massively fast and it's just entirely faster than what you would expect on your own so if we go back right here so as we can see this is still running it's finding some stuff but i think it's been about 10 to 15 minutes since i've ran this but now what i've done is i've imported the same exact file it's all the aol domains that we had right here and the same swagger.yaml and we're just gonna click on run right here and we're going to save and execute and i think based on my previous searches with this it's going to take about four to five minutes to run everything and give us all the results so let's take a moment and i'm just going to have this running right here and see which one finishes first 24 hours later so it looks like right here it just finished and 
six minutes it was the run, actually it was four minutes and 18 seconds of the run time versus doing about 18 to 19 minutes it's not a massive difference but this is a smaller list it was only 1847 targets so that 20 minutes is not a big deal but if you add a zero to that that's going to be a huge difference and you can also take an account of like how much time do you want to save especially if you're looking for a cve so right here we just got done with this and if we go to the runs and we look at the output right here for nuclear right here let's go to out and we can see it found the same results but it was just quite faster and this is kind of what i use for most of my mass scans and you're welcome to do whatever you want but when it comes down to looking for patterns of mistake this has been a great place for me to save a lot of time and and a shameless plug as an advisor of trick i love this product and i've been using it and i think you should too so when i want to do a mass scan for a lot of different endpoints and a lot of different domains this has become my go-to i have my vps but honestly the price becomes the same and kind of that's why i use trickus instead because i can just distribute my workflow entirely and it comes back a lot quicker all right that's it i know this was a longer video but it was a pretty large topic for us to cover i know a lot of you guys have asked about nuclear templates if you want to see a detailed video on that drop me a comment and if you enjoy content like this do me a favor drop me a comment with recon maybe i'll make more recon content i am kind of getting back into the recon stuff i'm no longer burning out by it so who knows maybe i'll make it all right that's it i will see you all on next week's video make sure you do all the liking and subscribing peace